So we could we be seeing the tides turning in Hollywood? Could that pendulum start swinging back the other way? Could we see a return to, I don't know, normalcy? We're going to get into that in just a second, but before we do, I wanted to thank the 18,000 plus of you that have subscribed to the channel. If you're new here, giving this video a like or watching this video, watching my content for the first time, and you like what I'm doing, drop a like, hit that thumbs up. The best way you can support the channel is give me a subscribe. And uh, before you leave, leave a comment. And those of you that are, that are returning, thanks for coming back in. Thanks for watching. Now let's get into it, shall we? So, Jenna Ortega. She stars in Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. It's coming out this weekend. Well, she was doing an interview. Uh, for MTV, I believe. Depending on which article you look at here. Yeah, with MTV. She was actually being interviewed with uh, Catherine O'Hara. And she was asked the question if she might consider an offer from director Tim Burton to revive Edward Scissorhands. Great movie, by the way. If you haven't watched it, check it out. I haven't seen it in quite a long time. As the gender flipped Edith Scissorhands. Now, Jenna, she, she's not having any of it. In fact, her response is great. She says, I love that there's a lot more female leads nowadays. I think that's so special. But we should have our own. Keyword there, our own. I don't like it when it's like a spinoff. I don't want to see like Jamie Bond, you know? I want to see another badass. This article is from Zach Scharf over at Variety. Similar article was written over by James Hibbard at the Hollywood Reporter. In fact, the, for those of you that don't know, both these um, publications, both these websites are owned by Penske, Penske Media, so they're, they're from the same owner. Uh, Breitbart delved into it a little bit. Paul uh, Boys, hopefully I'm pronouncing Paul's name correctly, over Breitbart. And again, Jenna is, she is so base, she gets it. The, the paying customer, the fans, they're not calling for these properties to be made for the modern audience. We don't want to see James Bond turned into Jamie Bond. We don't want to see a gender swap James Bond. We don't want to see, as she was asked there, taking Edward Scissorhands and turning it into Edith Scissorhands. You know, there's been a lot of good, strong female leads that have their own, their own story, their own path. One that comes to mind is uh, in Ghost Protocol. Mission Impossible, Ghost Protocol. I forget the character's um, name, and I even forget the actress's name. But that actress played a character that was a spy, had her own story, had her own, had her own path. That was a strong female character and was interesting. Uh, Anna Darmus came out. She was the Bond girl in No Time to Die. And she's even come out and said, there's no need for a female Bond. There shouldn't be any need to steal someone else's character to take it over. This is a novel and it leads into this James Bond world and in this fantasy of that universe where he's at. What I would like is that female roles in Bond films, even though Bond will continue to be a man, are brought to life in a different way, that they're given a more substantial part of it and recognition. 
That's what I think is more interesting than flipping things. Exactly. See, some reason in Hollywood, everybody's got to do a remake, do a reimagining, got to gotta make something for the modern audience. When the modern audience has proven that that's not what we want, at least for our entertainment. Look at this summer. What are the two biggest movies this summer? Inside Out 2 and Deadpool and Wolverine. What do those two movies have in common? Well, one, they're not remakes, reimagining a character or characters that were released years prior. Two, they're not woke. Or at least if there is a message, that message is secondary or even, I'll say, third on the list. And maybe, maybe some people in Hollywood are starting to figure that out a little bit. Because, you know, go woke, go broke. I mean, look what happened to the reimagined Little Mermaid. That didn't do so well. Look at what's happened to the, to the Disney live-action remake of Snow White that hasn't even been released yet. It's not going to do well when it comes out in, I think it's March of 2025. People do not want to see a reimagining of a classic character, period, end of story. I got no problem with strong female leads. I have no problem at all. As long as that strong female lead is not a reimagining of a classic character. And Give me more Jenna Ortega. Give me more Sydney Sweeney. Those two actresses seem to get it. So that's my take on this. We're, we're bored of the strong woman lead trope. Like Emily Blunt had said, Back in 2022. In fact, she even went further and said it's the worst thing ever when you open a script and read the word strong female lead. That makes me roll my eyes. I'm already out. I'm bored. Those roles are written as incredibly stoic. You spend the whole time acting though and saying though, though acting tough and saying tough things. There's a new there, season two of um, Lioness is coming out on Paramount Plus. It's a good show. I like it. Some of you may like it. Some of you may not like it. If you haven't checked it out, check it out. It's good. Has a strong female lead, but she's not overbearing. People thought with Twister, we'd have a, a Mary Sue as a strong female lead. Some people thought she was. I didn't think she was in, in Twisters. So there you go. That's my take. You guys can comment down below. Tell me what you think. While you're at it, please take the time to smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss a video. Thank you for watching. And with that, I will see you guys.